Hey guys, and welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of the many MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Dalton, a 100th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be working through this problem with you as though you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's practice problem can be found in the end of lesson mastery quiz in lesson four of the physics one module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. Now, this problem discusses different frictional forces, and there are two main frictional forces that we want to know about. I've got them displayed here. First, we have static friction. Think about ST for stay, ST for static. Static friction is the initial friction that we've got to overcome before the object will start moving. It's ST staying in place until we can overcome that initial friction that doesn't want it to move. Then, even once we get it moving, anybody will tell you, even once you start pushing a box or pushing anything, it's still hard to move. There's still some pushback there. And that's coming from the kinetic friction. Now, if you're a visual person, you can kind of maybe picture this in a big picture sense of what friction is. You've probably talked about this before. If you want to look at more in a smaller sense, I kind of like to think about it like this. At a microscopic level, the ground isn't really smooth. We might all have kinds of bumps and jagged things, so we'll call this the ground. Also, at that same microscopic level, the box we're pushing isn't smooth either. It's going to be jagged too. And so it's actually not a perfectly smooth surface. So when we want to push on it, there's going to be some rubbing. It's not going to want to move. And in order to overcome that initial rubbing, we have to put in a certain amount of force. So you'll notice here, as we apply more force, the friction force is going to increase as well so that the frictional force and the applied force are even. And this makes sense because if the forces weren't even, if they didn't cancel out, the box would be accelerating in some direction. But because the box isn't moving, we know those forces must be canceling out. So as our pushing force increases, the frictional force will increase as well. And so we'll see this linear trajectory. Eventually, we'll get to the point where we finally overcome that static friction, that, you know, that moment where all of a sudden, finally, after pressing more and more, that box shifts and it budges and it starts to move. And so all of a sudden, what we're going to see is now, instead of talking about static friction, we're talking about kinetic friction. We've overcome this initial block, and now it's just the natural rubbing on the ground as it moves. And what's interesting is the coefficient for kinetic friction is less than the coefficient for static friction. So we reach that maximum static friction, and once we overcome it, we change to kinetic friction because the box is moving. And because the coefficient for kinetic friction is actually smaller, kinetic friction is going to be slightly less than our max static friction. So that's why we see this initial increase as we push more and more, and the friction increases to cancel out that frictional force, so the box doesn't move. And then once we overcome all that max static friction, the max push against power it can provide, we're going to drop into kinetic because the box is now moving. And that's why we see this interesting shape of a graph here. Now, let's talk about this problem. This is a very similar scenario to the one we were talking about, right? This football player, he's pushing on this sled. It won't move at first because he hasn't overcome the static friction. He pushes and pushes. Finally, he overcomes it. And now it's moving. Now it's kinetic. And you know what graph we're looking for because we've been looking at it for a while now. But let's go ahead and talk about these other answer options first. First off, if you look here, what's interesting is as the time increases, we see that this is a curved shape. This isn't a linear increase. And so because it's this curved shape, it, since the, the gradually increasing force is increasing his pushing force, the applied force, there will be a time where the pushing force and the, fric the static friction force aren't equal because this isn't a linear line. And so that's not going to work. Then we'd have the box moving one way or another. That doesn't make sense. If we look at some of these other ones, we have this one that the, all these other ones are straight lines, which is good. But in this one, we never flatten out, which means that as our applied force increases, friction increases the same. And so they'll always cancel out and the box will never move or the sled, I should say. And that's obviously not what's going on. By contrast, we've got these last two that are very similar. And you'll remember what we talked about, kinetic force coefficient, kinetic friction coefficient coefficient, excuse me, is less than the static friction coefficient. And so we're going to have that initial increase and then that drop down, which we don't see here. And so that means this top one is our correct answer. Let's check it out. Awesome. Perfect. If you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. 
Now, if you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how we can help you maximize your MCAT score. Look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.